Okay, welcome to part two of three about setting up an ACI multipod uh, topology. Uh, just a real uh, quick, quick recap. In part one, we talked about setting up the interpod network devices and PIM and all of the requirements there. What we're going to do quickly in phase two is we're going to set up uh, an uh, OSPF neighbor adjacency between pod one spine 201 and its IPN peer. And we'll do the same thing for the pod two side as well. We'll create a TEP pool. We'll create an L3 out under tenant infra in order to bring up the OSPF adjacency. Real quick, the OSPF adjacency is required simply for tunnel endpoint reachability. Uh, as we connect these two pods together, we're going to be wanting to run VXLAN. And of course, we're going to need to know about the TEPs on either side in order for that to work. So let's get started. So what I've got here is I've I've got a, a clean fabric. There's nothing else configured. I've done an initial setup and fabric discovery, which is very common and very well known. As you can see, I've got my spine and my three leaves. Everything is, is properly discovered. What I haven't discovered is anything in the pod two side of things. So the very first thing that we need to do is we need to, uh, under fabric inventory, we need to go under pod fabric setup policy. And if you notice here for pod one, we've already got a TEP pool set up. That was part of the initial setup script. What we now need to do is set up a unique separate TEP pool for pod number two. And in order to do that, we right click and we say set up pods and we'll click the add, make sure that we specify pod two. You can pick anything you like as long as it's not the same TEP pool as pod one. In my case, I'm simply picking 10.1.0.0 slash 16. And that part is the simplest part. So the very next thing we need to do is we need to set up a few um, characteristics about the, the connection between the spines and the interpod network. So the same thing, we're gonna right click on pod fabric setup policy and we'll say create multipod. Now this brings up a new window. We need to do uh, a few things here. The first thing we need to do is we need to set up an extended community. Now this is a BGP attribute. And if you look at the instructions, there are some requirements uh, about how you format this community name. In my example, I uh, am required to use extended uh, colon AS2-NN4 for multipod. And there's something else if you're doing EVPN for a different thing called golf, which we're not talking about here. Uh, and then, so you can see in my particular example, uh, that's what I'm using. Uh, leave everything as full mesh, you don't need a VGP peer password in this particular case. But now what we need to do is we need to set up some TEP IP addresses uh, for uh, both sides of the, the, the pods here. So let's go ahead and click add. We'll say pod number one. Now this is an IP address coming out of the overlay dash one specific VPN that is used by the infra tenant. So this could really be any unique IP address here. So I'm just gonna pick, uh, let's say, because this is pod one, spine one, I'll pick 11.11.1 slash 32. Say update, let's do something else for pod two, because that's pod two, let's make it 22.22.1 slash 32. We'll say update, remember those because we'll see those guys again. The last thing we need to set up is something called a fabric external routing profile. If we go back to the topology, if you remember, these IPN devices live outside of the fabric. So they have IP addresses that the APIC isn't managing, so to speak. So we need to, to give APIC, let's say, permission to receive communications and packets from these external IP addresses. And that's what the fabric external routing profile does. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to give this a name like anything else in ACI. Um, routing profile. Uh, what I'll do here is if you remember my IP address uh, on either side, I was using 202 and 203. So just to be safe, let's pick uh, the whole slash 16. And we'll say update and submit. Those correspond to the fact that I'm using 202 here on that side and 203 on pod number two. So that's the 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 the, the second part. Now the the third part of the or the third step of this particular phase is actually establishing an L3 out under tenant infra. Now there's two ways you can do it, and I'll tell you which way I prefer. You can right click here and say create routed outside for multipod, um, but I don't like that way because the wizard kind of forces you into not necessarily doing everything you want to do in one step. So there's another way to do it. Under tenant, under infra, what we can do is under 
networking external routed networks, we can do it right here and do the same thing. Now notice we've got two choices. We want to say create routed outside for multipod. Now this brings up a, a new window. And all we're going to do here is we're just going to we're going to create this routed outside just like you'd create any other L3 out uh, with a couple of exceptions. So let's give this a name. MPOD L3 out. You cannot deselect these. These both need to be on. We use OSPF, as we said, for, for tunnel endpoint reachability. We use MPBGP so that we can tell both sides of the pod about the endpoints and where they live. The, the next thing to be careful of is you want to make sure this is an OSPF area zero and it is a regular area. That's the only thing you need to be aware of on that screen. Going to the next screen, again, just like creating a normal OSP app, we have to create uh, which node we're using here and which interface is on those nodes. And so what we're going to do is uh, specify that and then end up creating some routed sub interfaces that correspond with the sub interfaces that we built in the Interpod network. So let's call this uh, MPOD OSPF nodes. We'll say we'll add the spines. Now be very careful that, that there is a, a required syntax here. So in my case, it's pod dash one dash node dash 201 because that's the node number of my spine. Yours, yours may different. We need to give it a, a loopback address, right? So let's give it an address of all 11s. And we'll say update. Now let's do the same thing. Even though we haven't discovered the spine in pod two, it's okay to add it here. So again, we will say pod dash two slash node dash 202 because that's what I'm going to be calling my spine two when I finally do discover it. And let's give it this address as a loopback for OSPF. And there we go. We've got that part. Um, we need to create an interface profile now. We need to tell ACI which interfaces on the spine are we talking about here. So uh, let's say OSPF int. Now let's, let's make sure we're clear. We'll say F, uh, mpod OSPF int. And the first thing we need to do is set up an OSPF policy with some very specific things to make this work. So let's go ahead and create that. Uh, we'll call this mpod OSPF P2P. And the reason for that is it needs to be a point to point network. We need to uh, click two boxes here, advertise the subnet and MTU ignore. Everything else we can leave default standard OSPF timers. We've got that. Now the last uh, little bit we need to do is we need to uh, specify the routed sub interfaces for each of the spines pointing to their interpod network peer. So let's do that. Uh, again, notice that the syntax is very specific in the example. Uh, so I will say pod dash one, node dash 201 slash eth slash one slash 20. That's the connection in my particular lab. Your environment may be different. I chose ethernet 20. We need to give the other side of the OSPF peer. So if you remember, Spine number one was 202.1.1.2 on the IPN side, so our side will be dot one. Let's say update. And on this side, we'll do the same thing for pod two, spine two. Again, we haven't discovered it, but since we've planned ahead of time, I know it will be called node 202. And for symmetry's sake, I've also picked ETH 120. You don't have to do that. In my case, I just made it symmetrical. And if you remember, that side was using two, the 203 network slash 30, and we'll say update. We'll say finish. Now, at this point, we should actually see the OSPF neighbor adjacency come up between the interpod network device and the spine in pod one. So let's have a look at our OSPF neighbors. And if you remember the address of all ones, we are in a full state and um, here is the address. So everything is good and we see the proper interface. So this is what we expect to see at this point. So We've completed phase two, we've established OSPF for tunnel endpoint reachability. And if we go back to our APIC, we go back to our fabric and we go back to fabric membership, we should now see devices from pod number two wanting to join the fabric. So if you look here, here is actually a spine, spine number two showing up. Now what happens is a DHCP request is coming from the spine in pod two hits the IPN, the IPN has DHCP relay, we'll send it over to pod one, the APIC will hear it, and it will show up in this list. So let's go ahead and register that switch, uh, and then we will um, make sure that we specify pod two. And if you remember, we have to call this node 202 and spine two, so I picked these names ahead of time, and we'll say update. And in just a second, I'm, not, I'm gonna stop the video here, but we'll see a TEP uh, IP address come out of the 10.1 range.
And there we go, spine two uh, picked up an address, 10.1. We've seen the other two spines in pod number two show up for discovery, and we can go ahead and add them. Um, so here I'll end the video. Uh, stay tuned for phase three because there's one more set of steps we need to do to establish physical connectivity to bring up the control plane of multi-protocol BGP so that we can actually understand where endpoints are on either side of the multipod setup.